we met the Sea of the Arctic at the end of the Earth. Strong people who know how to be thankful for nature ruled the world. I am off to see the great nature of Alaska. I had a question ever since the beginning of the trip. Why do people miss the nature of Alaska? I found the answer. Within the mother nature of Alaska. As a traveler, I have visited places all over the world for the past 30 years. Out of all the places I've traveled to, I always miss Alaska. Whenever I am tired or weary, I think of the nature here. Today, I am starting my journey in Fairbanks, the second biggest city of Alaska. Fairbanks was developed when gold mines were discovered 100 years ago. Traces of the past are still left all over the city. This Alaskan train is one of the main attractions. It was made during the gold rush to transport coal and gold. It is now a popular sightseeing train that is used to enjoy the scenery of Alaska. The universal means of transportation before trains were ships. Discovery three. This is a ship designed after those during the gold rush. It takes you along the Chena River to see Fairbanks. This is a paddle wheel steamboat that uses a water wheel. It feels like I took a time machine back in time. There are some 3,000 rivers in Alaska. In the past, villages were connected by the rivers, and villagers got supplies they needed through it. And those tires, those bush wheels only have about... This ship is like a moving history museum of Alaska. I am the captain of the boat for a minute. There you go. <laughs> the steering wheel feels quite different from that of a car. Of course, safety comes first. Captain, thank you very much. Hey, you're wel very welcome. Oh, I'm very happy. Ah, good. <laughs> when I finish the steering experience, a special demonstration is being prepared on the Chenna River. This is a float plane. It doesn't need a runway, but it takes off and lands on water in the summer and ice in the winter. The people who fly these small planes are called bush pilots. The bush pilot is still they are brave adventurers who represent Alaska. And while he does that, the ferry continues on to the next destination. I wonder where we are headed. This is a sled dog demonstration area. 
This is one of the most prominent cultures of Alaska. The dogs run with speed for the tourists on the ferry. I get off the ferry and head toward the training area. The dogs greet the people as they come closer. I expected the dogs to be fierce, but they aren't. It's kind of trial and error. If you have a really young dog, like these four dogs right here are almost a year old and we're still training them. So if we decide to put them at the front of the team and they do really well and they listen to us and they're able to, to uh, you know, follow our commands. 14 dogs made up a team to pull our sled. I wonder how strong the dogs are. Each dog can actually pull the team between 10 and 15 times their own body weight. So. Betty, come here. Betty, go home. <laughs> <laughs> The history of dog sleds in the Arctic goes back over 1,000 years. Also, the dogs used to help transport mail, equipment, and gold during the gold rush. The ferry takes us somewhere else while the dogs cool off in the water. The riverside of the Chenna is like a well-made showroom. Caribou show us just as the ferry passes by. They are an important part of the lives of Alaska Eskimos. This is a native Alaskan village as I expected. This would have made salmon fishing so much easier. Eskimos dried the salmon using a traditional method to store for a long time when there weren't refrigerators. There is another way to store salmon than drying it. Smoked salmon is still enjoyed by many people. Is it what kind of salmon? Ah. It takes all the moisture out of it. It lasts a long time. Uh -huh. it, it'll, it would last probably up to two years. Mm -hmm. The traditional culture has become a tourist attraction, but it was more than enough to help me understand Alaska. These people are experiencing a traditional Eskimo wedding. Thank you, you are now officially married. Nature has always been a huge part of Alaska, both now and then. That will stiffen your flip-flops. Alaska is a warm place, but if you have a warm place for 6, 7, 8 days, if you have a warm place for 6, 7, 8 days, you will come to the world of Alaska. You will see the beautiful Alaska and the beautiful Alaska. The beautiful Alaska and the beautiful Alaska. The beautiful Alaska and the beautiful Alaska.
the greatness of nature silently embraces every part of Alaska. Let's take a stroll through magnificent nature. I head for Denali National Park and Preserve, two hours from Fairbanks, where we can see the wilderness. The size of Denali National Park and Preserve is huge. The area is 40 times the size of Seoul. It is bigger than North and South Jola provinces put together. Anyone who steps foot in Denali becomes speechless with its magnificence. It was in 5,000 years ago, the tundra was created. It was a tundra that we can't see easily. It was a tundra that was created by the Alaska Range. It was a tundra that was created by the Alaska Range. The nature of Denali isn't just for tourists, but it is pure wilderness. The distance people can travel by car is limited to four kilometers. I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to go from here. Uh, we're gonna go to, to the Stony Hill. Mm -hmm. So which point is the best point? Um, out here at like Igloo, if you go through this canyon, you can hike up like Tatler Creek, Polychrome Overlook. Polychrome, That's yeah. going to be some good stuff there. It's going to be very beautiful it's there, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's some hikes out here as well. You have to take this shuttle bus to see the inside of the park. But I know how fast you have to be able to run to get away from a grizzly bear. Or eat. Past to another guy behind you, that's right. The shuttle bus can only go 150 kilometers. I can't sit still because the scenery outside of the window is too beautiful to miss. If you're lucky, you get to see wild animals. People point out the window as two gray grizzly bears show up in the distance. This is the home to approximately 300 grizzly bears. This is why there are specific places you can get off the bus. It's a shame to have to look out from a confined space, but it is quite fun looking for wild animals. The bus stops briefly at an observatory. Although we can't touch the animals, people have fun with the antlers. Oh, Is it caribou? Oh, 10kg정도? 8kg, 10kg 정도? Quite heavy? Yeah. If the antlers are this big, how big was the caribou? 
I take a picture of the little boy as if the caribou came back to life. I decide to walk this time to get a closer look at Denali. There are set places and times people can get off the bus and walk around the park. However, you can't trust your eyes and sense of distance here. That's how wide it is. It takes several hours to reach something that seems to be right in front of your eyes. The scenery is different from looking at it from the outside. I see several things I couldn't before. This time, I plan to look down from a higher place. The land is covered with tundra moss and is more slippery than I expected. This is called Indian rock because it is shaped like the head of an Indian and it makes a great observatory. The hard climb pays off. The water is from the melted glaciers of the Alaska Range. It's cold enough to wake me up. I plan to follow the water up to the glaciers. I want to visit the place this water originates from. I face the heart of the Denali at the end of the stream. It is Mount McKinley. The melted glaciers of Mount McKinley create a river with a strong current that surrounds the Denali National Park and Preserve. This makes the area a popular place to go rafting. If you're right there, grab onto it. Few feet away. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, yeah from here group. we go north up to so the We're going to go from here to up to this way. Yes, sir. To Healy. Yes, sir. Okay. Is it dangerous? Uh, it's class three and four whitewater, so five is the most dangerous. Uh, yeah. Six is unrunnable. Three so. and four. Yeah, three Medium. and four. Okay. Good. But fun. More fun, fun than dangerous. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Let's put that arm in. And stop the water is so cold, they prepare us thoroughly so not a drop of water touches us. I'm sure the boat won't flip in the freezing water. I start the ride down the river with a nervous feeling. Fifty-five minutes of being splashed with melted glaciers brings the ride to an end. Fun. <laughs> I don't. What about you? I'm having a great time. One to ten. One to ten. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. I don't know. Y'all turn around. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> My journey is nearing its end. I decide to stay here for a night, where I can feel the energy of Denali. This is a cozy place to rest, surrounded by nature without artificial lights or the racket of a city. I even have a next door neighbor. Tonight I'm going to stay there. Okay. That, that's my tent. That's fine. So we are neighbors. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Go to the bathroom real yeah, quick. Okay, okay. He's from Texas and has been here for a few days. I joined his friends late in the afternoon. Working on my chopstick skills. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spicy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really good, actually. It's really good. Yeah. For you. I miss the Bangladesh. They like the kimchi more than I expected. It's from Mr. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's really good. good. You visiting? Yeah. Yeah, with Craig. Yeah. You nice here. <laughs> yeah, I think so. They seem more interested in something else than the conversation. They seem fascinated with the camera team's multi-copter. Okay? Yeah. This is uh, going up sky and then make a filming about us. Oh, wow. You want to fly this one? Something this freaking cool that somebody else. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let me see right now. Yeah, ready? I'll have to satisfy their curiosity. <laughs> this is what the multicopter is capturing on video at this moment. I guess it is quite interesting. We can find various sides of beauty if we take a look at the same thing from a different angle, but usually only see things from one viewpoint. Okay, she will come. <laughs> yeah, come down now. I was able to make new friends easily, thanks to the flying camera. Good job. Oh, it all just lands. And it all just lands. <laughs> just land it. 
Watching the film video together was also fun. Everybody's here. Wow. Later in the evening, they start cooking dinner. Oh, man. We're going to be a meme. The highlight of camping is having a barbecue outdoors. It may be because of the good energy from the forest, for I wake up refreshed. I carefully listen to the sounds of nature like someone under an oath of silence. At this moment, silent nature comforts me. People seek nature when they are physically and mentally sick. No medicine or doctor helps us heal better than nature. The embrace of nature makes us forget about our worries, like a fetus in its mother's belly. And once again, we are recharged. We regain the strength to live in the world that is much like a jungle, without backing down. This is the last stop on my journey. I head toward Talkeetna to see Mount McKinley from up close. This is the base camp to Mount McKinley, a place hikers all over the world dream of visiting. Does this mean only hikers come here? No. There are more tourists like me who want to see the mountain from up close than hikers. How are you? Going uh, yeah, to your, are you going to your country with this video? Yeah. Good. You live here? Yes. Uh, Welcome to Takitna. 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 AMF. Why did you come here to Takitna? Uh, why not? Look at oh, why not? Yeah. Well, we're tired. Tired. Uh -huh. We want to come and fish. enjoy yes. the adventure. Salmon fishing. Sure. To do fish. Fishing, boating, and then climb the mountain. <laughs> no, we're not going to climb no. the mountain. No, yeah, yeah. No climbing the mountain. No climbing the mountain. Like they said, you don't have to hike here. It's because you can see snow covered mountains of the Alaska Range, including Mount McKinley from a small plane. There is no rule that you have to hike up a mountain. Finally, I head toward the summit of Mount McKinley. We pass the green meadows of the tundra and lakes. An unexpected area of glaciers show up. Places where the glaciers melted and formed a puddle shine brighter than a jewel. Time is etched into the glaciers that stretch out endlessly as they move to and fro.
Soon, the magnificent snow-covered mountains of the Alaskan range can be seen. This is the moment Mother Nature is embedded in my heart, in its natural form, something I only heard and read about. I finally see the summit of Mount McKinley, the highest peak in North America, at an elevation of 6,194 meters. Native Alaskans believe that everything in nature has a spirit. And at this moment, I take in the holy energy of Mount McKinley. The plane lands briefly on Ruth Glacier. McKinley! <sighs> 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 7월에 8월에 날씨가 보통 구름으로 끼어 있어 가지고 이렇게 해를 볼수 있는 기회가 많지 않은데 오늘 완벽하게 파란 하늘이 펼쳐져 가지고 저도 지금 놀랄 지경입니다. A man who visited Alaska 100 years ago said this before he passed away. Don't visit Alaska when you're young. Go when you feel like they are the last days of your life. This land full of glaciers, which make it hard for anything to survive. Every living thing finds strength hidden deep within. This is the vitality that comes from nature. And this is why people miss the nature of Alaska. <laughs>